Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And there's an hour in there. It's been an hour in there a lot. We got a lot of fantastic writers uh, graciously allowing me to work with them, and it's been amazing to uh, be part of it. Uh, I've loved going this direction, and part of it is because we get to uh, work with fine play, fine uh, writers such as Delhi here. Delhi, I, uh, I, I, I go in on the Twitter a lot, and I, I, I like to read a lot of hockey writers, and I, I found this guy, young guy, I thought, what a fantastic uh, writer and knowledge and I uh, reached out to him, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll come do some stuff with you." And I was like, "Cool!" And now we have to, we have the fortunate, um, we're fortunate to be able to have him. And I thank you very much for Delhi for doing this. No problem. Thanks for having me. I can't, I can't thank you enough for letting me come on here and, and talk hockey with you. Yeah. Uh, so Delhi, you're, uh, you're having a few fire issues and stuff like that in your area. Yeah, it's a little sketchy um, down here in Southern California, like closer, just a little south of LAX, where uh, we've got the ashes falling on the cars and stuff like that, and wow. some red sunsets. But it, it's not as bad as you see some pictures in Oregon and Washington. Of literally, like it looks like it, the movie Mad Max. It's pretty, it's pretty scary. So, um, yeah, thoughts with uh, all the people who have lost their homes in fires and are are struggling with air quality issues and just kind of the fear involved with forest fires here on the West Coast, but. Uh, uh, besides that, everything's happy, family, safe on my end. How about you? Uh, fortunately, not burning here. Uh, uh, it's getting that time of cold. But 2020, what the heck is happening here? You can yeah. go, bitch. You can go. Yeah, just, right. just, end, just end this year now. Let's start 2021 early. <laughs> exactly. Let's just pretend this didn't happen and move on. Okay, so we're going to talk about some playoff hockey now, sort of like a midstream uh uh, Western fi- Western and Eastern finals looking and how things have been going and where things may go. But uh, we're also going to talk about something that's been pretty, I, I, I don't know, I, I was really surprised when I saw this. We're going to talk about the Jack Adams Award and uh, what happened here with, uh, it's been uh, all, it's been given to Cassidy. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, what do you, what do, how do you think that all happened? And do you think it's a rightful place for that award? I think it was uh, surprising that Cassidy won. I mean, yeah, he won the president's trophy with the Bruins and uh, he is a good coach, but I think there were more deserving candidates. I mean, Cassidy's team goes to the Stanley cup finals game seven last year. It's not like he brought up a, a weaker roster. He's got a pretty stacked roster. So uh, I really do think Tortorella missed out on, on, on an award there. I think he did deserve it. Although he has, has he won, not that this matters, but has he won one before? I think he has. Yeah, he has won one. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, I just wonder specifically when the media voted on that award, because I know they vote before the playoffs start, but with the kind of weird situation with the play in, not technically being the playoffs, I'm curious if they voted but either before the play-in round started or if they voted between the play-in round and the start of the actual playoffs. Because if it was before the play-in round started, uh, they, they might have been – I mean, I, I think you have, you have a theory that I'll, I'll let you touch on, so I'm not going to go into it quite too much yet. But I think that because – maybe because his team was kind of on the, on the edge of the playoff picture, I know they had uh, enough points to be in the eighth position if they were doing a normal playoff uh, – situation if this had been a normal season but they had two games in hand on the two teams they were competing with i think it was uh the islanders and carolina uh columbus did so uh i think that maybe the writers were holding the fact against him that he might not have made the playoffs in a standard season and and no no coach has ever won the jack adams and not made the playoffs so uh maybe that's uh that's one of the reasons but i'll let you go i mean what do you think about it you you told me earlier and I, i think you're pretty right probably yeah, I think he's just getting thrashed for his attitude towards the media. I really do. Uh, Tortorella is a guy that um, there's nobody that hates to lose more than Tortorella. And I think sometimes you just got to, uh, I don't know, in other leagues, I think they kind of do this a little bit more than they do in hockey. Um, sometimes they'll leave, they'll just realize that certain coaches, certain people are just not good at certain times and just leave them alone. Right. Where hockey, it's like you're expected to show up 
right after a loss and sit there and listen to people and a lot of times say just stupid shit. Um, and some coaches are can put themselves in a place to be able to be respectful. Some coaches just have that. It's, it'd be like if you took John McEnroe after a loss and said, hey, do you want to talk about some stuff? You know, that would have probably not worked out well for everybody involved. And that's how I see it with Tortorella. Um, he's getting, yeah, he says some bad stuff. And I, I, I hope he regrets it afterwards. But there's a point where it's like, okay, the same thing that makes Tortorella great is the same reason why you just don't talk to him after a loss. After a loss, he just can't say anything good at that moment he doesn't want to hear from anybody he just wants to say we lost and this sucks and leave me alone and um maybe we should just do that okay it's okay <laughs> i think you know i i i kind of compare tortorella to bill belichick in football that's the obvious yeah. kind of comparison between coaches that don't really necessarily deal well with the media um I don't think it's right that they judge him for his his coaching awards and stuff based on his attitude toward the media. But I I don't disagree. I do disagree with the fact that they should just leave him alone because he still provides that kind of content, even even though it doesn't. I mean, he does it kind of regularly where he walks out or he gives a one word answer and then he leaves. But that that kind of maybe it's a little bit of a psychological torture for everyone involved. But it does it does provide content for the audience. I mean, it is entertaining to see him say like, oh, whatever, one word answers, goodbye. Uh, and when he wins, I mean, he's he's happy. So uh, I think that that is important. It is important to keep in front of the mic. Like Belichick is slightly different in that way where he he doesn't necessarily like to deal with the media, but he's also incredibly like he finds new ways to be condescending to the media. Tortorella just kind of blows up or shuts down. But yeah. Belichick is like, that was a stupid question. <laughs> He, like makes weird grunts. The Boston media, the New England media, just like t- makes whole highlight videos and uh, sound effects of all the grunts and like scoffs he does. Like, <laughs> yeah. So uh, gifts, gifts and memes. <laughs> yeah, and and that that does it's good for something. So I think yeah. I don't think they're wrong for putting him in front of a microphone in a press conference when he loses. I just think that the media, when they're voting for the Jack Adams Award, is wrong if they let that influence their decision. So. Yeah, I think Tortorella missed out for sure on the on the Jack Adams Award. And like you mentioned, it's tough for a guy who probably knows that someone else deserves it more, like in Cassidy. Uh, I'm sure he's happy to take it, but uh, at the same time, it's like I was not the I, I didn't contribute the most to my team's success like Tortorella did, especially. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. sorry I mean, about that. Well, you have such a you have there's such a also such a a, bl- a kind of a black and white comparison between last year and this year where last year they make it with Panarin and Bobrovsky and uh, Duchesne. And, and this year he doesn't have any of those players and they still, they still make it. I mean, they made it in a little bit of a different way, but I think, I mean, he, he most certainly deserves that award. Yeah. I mean, the guy never ceases to amaze me. I've undervalued, he's my favorite coach of all time and I've undervalued him, like underestimated him over and over again myself. And he's my favorite. Like I'm, I'm a capper for a living. How many times did I tell my clients to bet against him and they, they win? It's like, how did that happen? <laughs> and like, I've like before the season started, I was like, yeah, okay, Tortorella is a great coach, but there's no freaking way he's bringing this team even close to the playoffs, right? And uh, yeah, yeah, there he goes. He does it. I, that, it was one of the most. Inc- the reason why I get. And I'm pretty sure I am more pissed off about it than Tortorella himself. <laughs> I don't even think Tortorella gives a crap about it, to tell you the honest truth. But I think it was one of the a most incredible coaching performances in a season ever in the NHL. And you're waste and they're wasting it based on the fact that he has a poor attitude after losses, which I just think is ridiculous. What I mean by that is what I mean by leaving him alone is leave him alone if you're gonna judge him like this. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you're going to talk to them, know what to expect, but don't take that away from awards or whatever the case may be somewhere down the road or even giving them fines. OK, if you if you know what he's like, you're going to go talk to him and then find him for it. If the fines aren't working. If you don't like it, leave him alone. That's what I mean by that. Not by I agree with you. I think it's great entertainment. They should be appreciative of the fact that he gives them an article when they talk to him afterwards, not mm-hmm. slamming him for some of the things he probably said. 
maybe one thing we don't know is what Tortorella says outside of in the private. He may get personal with some of these guys. I'll give them that. It's possible. Yeah, in which case, maybe that's it. Yeah, absolutely. So, if that's the case, then I guess I'll, I'll give it that. I'll leave it at that, I suppose. Um, as far as Cassidy is concerned, he is a deserving candidate. He's a great coach. He's a deserving candidate to one day win this. Uh, it would just would have been better if it was more going in his favor when he actually won the Coach of the Year award. I think it would have been – it kind of takes the shine off of it for him as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and and you're right actually to 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 look at the media and their reactions because Cassidy gives Cassidy is an incredibly open and I mean he speaks he speaks his mind. I mean, he's not he he gives the media a lot in terms of information about players, in terms of how he feels about one or another, how he feels they need to improve. Like he's not keeping really a lot back. Uh so I mean, I think that lends more credence to your to your theory that they're going by someone they like versus someone they don't like because Cassidy is is a, a great interview um, in the Boston media specifically. Yeah, and he's Boston, which I could go into maybe just a tiny bit. Also, I think that it's even worse than that because I think even A.V. may deserve the award more than him as far as what A.V. had to do with that uh, with that team and how he turned that team around and all of those sort of things like that. But you can make a case for Cassidy, so I'm not going to go too far into that. Um, he did bring his team to the President's Trophy. And, I mean, that there's some a lot to be said for that. Okay, so let's look at the series so far that we're in uh, the Western and Eastern. Um the, the one that seems to be maybe the more intriguing at the moment seems to be the Islander series and how they're doing against Tampa Bay uh, down 2-0. But, man, what, what, uh, what a down 2-0 it is. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty impressive Islanders team that's down 2-0 against Tampa, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that first game was kind of a massacre. Uh, and and let don't don't get me wrong. The Tampa Bay Lightning are the better team, top to bottom, and will win this series. But that that game two day yesterday two days ago, man, I'm losing track. Yesterday, uh, last time. night, the 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 one that Tampa pulled out in seven seconds on that Kucherov goal, uh, the final seven seconds. I think the Islanders showed a lot in that loss. They showed, I mean, they bounced back after they got completely dismantled. Uh, I think it just shows what a motivator that that Barry Trotz is. He continues to demonstrate that he's the best coach in, in the NHL. Uh, and I, I think that Islanders team, uh, they have some things to work on, certainly. We're, we, you talked about goaltending uh, before the show started, and, and we'll get into that. And uh, their their defense isn't that deep, but they I've always been impressed, I mean, this whole season with their kind of – they don't have a couple star scores like teams like the Edmonton Oilers do or the Bruins, but they have depth. I mean, a lot of guys on their team can score. I think it was – five guys had 40 plus points a season and and then you had Barzell who I think had around 60 like that's a pretty good that's two lines that can contribute regularly and then you have that third is Clutterbuck on that third line oh fourth yeah fourth yeah I love Clutterbuck Clutterbuck is such a I mean he's one of those all around like he's he can make some plays I I think it was the last round against the Flyers where he kind of made that spinorama pass in front of the net from kind of the corner uh he, I mean, he can mix things up. He hits people. He makes plays. I, I love Clutterbuck. When you have two top lines that can contribute kind of by committee, but regularly, and then you have two bottom lines that, that have that skill and ability to, to contribute when needed. I, I like the Islanders o- offense and, and um, yeah, they need, they need to f- figure out a long-term goaltending solution and deepen their defensive core a little bit. But I, I, even in what I'm sure is going to be a series loss for the Islanders, I'm, I'm impressed with them. Yeah, uh, Martin has five goals. By the way, fourth line, your fourth liner has five goals. Uh, that's pretty. That's always. That's pretty impressive uh, depth, I would say. Beauvillier, I think, has seven. Uh, Pajot's been playing fantastic. It was a great pickup that I actually kind of criticized a little bit when they did it, but uh, he has been probably. He might be their best. He might have been their maybe not best player, but most inspirational player uh, for this year in the playoffs. Um, I agree. Their defense is a little is is lacking, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, Letty and having Mayfield in your top four is probably not the best scenario. They can probably, hopefully, be able to add to that. But my my thing, like you said about Barry Trotz, is 
Um, I don't know if this lineup would be able to do what it does if it wasn't for Barry Trotz as a coach. There are coaches that we just talked about with Tortorella who I made a mistake. Barry Trotz is my favorite in the NHL. I think Tortorella is the best, but you can make an argument for both and what have you. But um, the pushback that this team has, and, and that's what is to me, the most impressive part about the Islanders teams and Barry Trotz teams in general, they never seem to get down. They're always, even in the loss, like you could tell they were exhausted, but even in that loss, you could tell they were giving every ounce of effort that they possibly had it, right down to the bitter end of that game. Um, the uh, determination of Barry Trotz led teams is absolutely amazing. And then you combine Lamorello, who gets this, um, uh, he gets kind of labeled as this old school guy who doesn't know the game anymore, blah, 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 blah. Well, Lamorello always built deep teams. New Jersey, always. They always had deep teams. He didn't worry about having the big superstar so much. He paid more attention to having what you just said, a deep team all the way through. Then you add a Barry Trotz as a coach who seems to be able to thrive in that environment himself, although he proved he could you he could get superstars to do something too in Washington, which was pretty impressive as well. Um, you give him a lineup like this and he seems to get the best out of everybody. But I want to give Lamorello some props here because I, I criticize that move. But um, he he has added to this team from what he got. And made, I mean, I didn't like the Eberle signing either, but you can make a case that Eberle has done everything and more for this team that it could ever could be asked for him for a $5.5 million player. He's not a guy who likes to shoot, but he contributes. So it's an interesting structure of a team. If they add defense, this team could very well be winning a cup in the next year or two. And, and I, I just don't think that happens. Without Barry, without Barry Trotz, I give Barry Trotz almost uh, full full marks for uh, having a pushback team like this. As far as Tampa is concerned, I've been really impressed with Cooper this year and how his attitude and de demeanor as a coach seems to have completely flip flopped and and uh, uh, maybe matured. What do you figure? Yeah, I agree. I, I think Tampa has shown us uh, that they are the best team in the Eastern Conference by far. I mean. Uh, just to throw it back quickly to the last series where they beat the Bruins. Uh, they d absolutely dismantled the Bruins last year. They did the same thing not the or this past during this playoffs and then two seasons ago between with the Bruins making the Stanley Cup Finals sandwiched in between. But uh, that that loss to Columbus last year, it's clear was a fluke. It was the overconfidence of the strong regular season that they had. And I think they demonstrated that they are by far the best team in the Eastern Conference. And and are able to counteract the, the especially the defensive influence of Barry Trotz because you mentioned the Islanders don't have a deep defensive team, but Trotz is a very good defensive coach, and you can just not stop the Tampa Bay Lightning. They just keep coming. They have, I mean, with even without Stamkos, like it's incredible. Now Braden Point is emerging as as a as just a really great player. Um, I think that the Lightning and, and Cooper, I, I think you can see how much he's learned in the in the years that he's been the coach of Tampa Bay, even that he learned from last year. He's, he's a calm, looks like a, seems like a level-headed guy. I think he's a guy that that team needs to, uh, to keep things going. Maybe if they hit some adversity, which they haven't so far. Um, and then the last thing, I think you got to give a lot of credit to uh, Steve Eiserman. I know he's the GM of the Red Wings now or president of hockey operations, but this is mostly his roster that is accomplishing this. And, and not only his roster, but his, his kind of, floor plan or, or ability to sign these players and keep them under contract uh, and then and then have his successor be able to add someone like Shattenkirk. Uh, it's just <laughs> it's just yeah. very impressive. Um, so that, that, that's 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 my two cents on the lightning. I think they are the I, I think they're going to win it all. Uh, I think they'll probably we'll talk about who gets to the finals next, but I, I don't see a team beating lightning. Yeah, I'm looking at that way too. Uh, what is his successor's name? I always forget. French last name starts with a B, but yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> ah, every time I'll remember it and say, okay, I'm never going to forget it this time, but I did. Anyways, he did some good moves as well. He picked Goudreau up. Uh, that was a fantastic move. Ballsy paid a first for a guy like that. Coleman gave up a lot of picks. 
Uh, something that Iserman wasn't want to do, by the way. Uh, it's not what he normally would do. But Iserman spoke glowingly of him and said, like, if there's any, he's the only one that you want yeah. to. Breezeball. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking up on and, the phone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's done. He should get his own props, too. He, he did some excellent acquisitions at the trade deadline. Trade deadline acquisitions all, quite often don't work very well, but they have in this case. Um, and yeah, well, Stevie Eisenman's my favorite human, ma favorite male in the land ever, all time. So I'll always be, uh, he's just a genius, absolute genius. But uh, yeah, what a, I agree with you too. Tampa Bay is way stacked. So let's go over to the other one real quick. Uh, Vegas, Dallas. Um, Dallas comes in the first game and uh, plays the Dallas type game. And but the whole time, I never really felt like Dallas dominated that game. Um, to me, it sort of seems like they were reverting a little bit. What do, what do you think? I think a lot of it, I mean, Dallas played very well in that first game. But I think that the thing that was more of a factor was Thatcher Demko from the previous series still being in the Golden Knights' head. Uh, I, they, had, they, they went through that, what was it, two game, two plus games without scoring a, on a goaltender. Uh, yeah. Before they finally broke out in the last seven minutes of, of that of that third period of Game Seven, um, mm -hmm. I think that was a little bit of a, a, a factor in how they started this series. I mean, it, it lasted. I mean, you go that long as a hockey team without being able to score and having so many. Ch I mean, they dominated the end of that Vancouver series. Uh, I think it can be a little bit of a, a, a of a of a, a mind. I don't know. Mind f. Uh, it's in your head. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and you saw when they finally broke through in the second game against Dallas, how happy they were, how much guys like Mark Stone and William Carlson were, were celebrating scoring. Like it was like they, the first goals of the season. It was really, uh, it was really interesting to see. You could tell that their, that their confidence and their mindset had been affected by what Demko did to them. So I think now, I think now you're going to see Vegas really, take charge in the series. I think you're going to really see them kind of pile it on like they did against Vancouver, at least pile on the chances, maybe not the goals, but uh, I think, I think they're going to do well with Laner and net. I don't think you go back to uh, Mark Andre Fleury. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to see Vegas take, take a two, one or three, one series lead in the next couple games. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Laner's four shutouts already in the playoffs. I mean, uh, if any team is going to, get you to revert back to a time when you can't score, which was most of the season. Uh, Vegas with Laner may just very well do that. They may turn it turn it around where they, you're hold, the opposition's holding their stick too tight. That was a really good point, by the way, about coming out of that Vancouver series. Uh, they were doing, they were throwing a lot of pucks, even with Demko. They were right at his midsection, pretty much. Uh, that's when you know a team is play is holding their sticks tight. They're not playing loose, and just trying to get pucks on net. Probably heard that several times from their coach. And uh, sometimes you, we can sometimes a coach can overdo that uh, to the point where all of a sudden the creativity is lost. And a team like Vegas cannot afford that. They are a creative team that has to play creative, and if they don't, they will surely not do well. Um, I saw a difference in the second game, and uh, I don't see them going back now. I think that Dallas um, has been a psych. It's been a psychological struggle for that organization for a little too a far too long now. Maybe right back to the Hitchcock days of systematic robotic type play and it seems to be permeating through the whole organization as far as culture is concerned and um, has consistently brought on a non-scoring team it's a waste of talent is really what it is the talent on that Dallas team with especially with Heiskanen and uh, the defense that they have there um, great Radulov and you know yeah, Sagan Ben uh, Gary Onoff, I mean I think is a, a great player who I'd love to see how he played on another team yeah it's going to be interesting who they pick to uh, as a coach because I don't think that they're going to stick with um, Bonus. Bonus, uh, Rick Bonus not that he's done a horrible job but he's sort of been they need to get somebody that has been totally out of the system it's unfortunate what happened to the previous coach 
Uh, he is actually was a was a very good coach, but they were having problems scoring with him as well. They I think they need to find a coach that thinks things way outside of the box. Just throw everything you've ever known about this organization out, almost to say I don't even care if you play defense first. Just go out and freaking score, and then turn things around. But until then, a team like Vegas I think is going to dismantle them quite a bit. Uh, I, um, I love uh, Hudobin as a as a personality and everything like grinded out hardworking goaltender that, that, you know, has earned every accolade or success that he's ever had. He, uh, I like Kelly Rudy said it best when he said he's not the most talented goaltender in the league, but he just wills his way to stop the puck. And, uh, I love him, but I think it might be over for Dallas now. Yeah, he reminds me, Hudobin reminds me of similar in style to, to Tim Thomas. I mean, he, uh, he's, he's a little bit unorthodox. He, uh, unorthodox. He's a little bit, he's kind of out there, as many goalies are, um, in terms of personality. Uh, but he, even at the way he looks, he, he seems like a Russian, a little bit of a Russian Tim Thomas. Uh, obviously, even though he's performed well, hasn't quite performed at that Tim Thomas 2011 level. No. But uh, no. he, I mean, he, he does remind me a lot of him. Yeah, he could do. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see where he goes from there. I think he's going to be, he's kind of worked himself into a place where he's uh, outpriced himself in Dallas. But it's going to be interesting to see where he's going to go. So I guess, I don't know, maybe we've kind of foreshadowed our future, uh, what's going to happen in these playoffs here. But what do you think? Let's go all the way to the finals. What are we predicting out of each uh, side? And, uh, do you see the uh, either Dallas or Islanders making a, making the series of it? And if they are, uh, who who might win? Who who might end up winning this whole thing? There, but. I can see Dallas making a series uh, against Vegas after that first game. They really made me kind of question my Vegas pick. I mean, I didn't pick Vegas or Dallas at the beginning of our whole process to make the Stanley Cup Finals, but once Vegas started rolling, I kind of felt like they were a strong candidate. They made me kind of question my my decision. So I think Dallas is the one that can make this. I mean, it is a series. It's tied one, one can keep it a series. Uh, yeah. I just don't think the Islanders can keep up with the lightnings overall talent and their will after what happened last year. Uh, they just have at a two Oh series deficit. Now they have too much of a hill to climb uh, against the lightning. So I'm going to, I think, and we're going to be da- uh, Tampa Bay and probably Las Vegas in the finals, Vegas, not, I mean, technically they're Vegas, not Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. But, um, I and I, I just feel like Tampa has, oh man, that's a, that's Vegas and Tampa. If you're trying to figure out who's going to win that cup final is a hard, is a hard one. I think Tampa's got it. I just think they're so, so deep offensively and defensively with Sergeyev and Hedman. Uh, they're having, they're having young players step up They're They, I think in a lot of ways, they kind of are the Vegas East of the NHL or Vegas is the Tampa, Tampa West. Uh, but I just see them as a little bit deeper, uh, just by a smidge, but I think that would be a great series. I would love to see Vegas and Tampa. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's, what's going to be the series. And it's funny. Yeah, you, it, it was one, one, but, uh, they are one, one with Dallas, but I almost feel like it doesn't like, it feels like it's already three, one, uh, that with that series, what? Well, I could be proven wrong, and I have a lot of uh, Dallas uh, supporters out there that watch my show. They're probably really mad at me right now, <laughs> but I'll find out in my lives, which I do most most evenings. They'll they'll tell me all about it. But um, excellent point at the end. Uh, Vegas, Tampa, almost feels like back in the Oil- Islanders Oilers days. Like you could actually have an offensive type. Uh, game again like we've never we haven't had that in a very long time and uh two great goaltenders in Vasilevsky and Lehner that is going to be so that would be so fun to watch um I I don't I think Tampa Bay would likely win that but Lehner is such a beast he could just he could be the 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 um tonic that puts Vegas over the top that's my biggest fear there Lehner is just playing way too well I want to see, I mean, if this is indeed the Stanley Cup final matchup, I'm really curious to see 
how Vegas kind of utilizes their more physical guys against Tampa. I mean, Tampa is a physical team, but I wonder if you if you trot out a guy like Ryan Reeves, uh, try to get him to really throw Tampa off their game. I mean, we're way ahead of ourselves here in terms of previewing the Stanley Cup final. I know, but if it happens to go, you just can't help but talk about that series. It almost yeah. hopes that it happens. Right? Yeah. I, I'd like to see how Vegas would employ Ryan Reeves in that situation in terms of getting in people's heads and stirring stuff up. And uh, and then on the flip side, I'd really love to see just how Kucherov and, and Point and those guys perform at the highest, most uh, uh, highest pressure uh, games of their careers. Yeah, I, I'd like to see the, the Maroon Reeves. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to be... hear, I would love to hear the vocals all the way through that, man. Them chiming back and forth at each other. Maroon's one of the funniest guys ever, and Reeves is too. They get chirping, man. They're the best. <laughs> well, boys and girls, that's our full 42%. Uh, this has been Deli. He is incredible. What do you got going on there now, Deli? Uh, tell us about your podcast possibilities and all of that. Yeah, so uh, I will be uh, co-hosting the uh, Totally Offsides podcast next week. So that episode will be out a week from Saturday. Uh, working on a hockey writer's article, um, thinking about looking forward to the uh, expansion draft for the Anaheim Ducks. That should be out in a few days. Uh, and yeah, submitted our podcast contest uh, submission to iHeartRadio for the, the Lost Teams podcast, which I might have mentioned last episode. So waiting to hear if we win that. But if we don't, we're going to go forward with it anyway. Um, yeah, so that's where things are right now. <laughs> yeah, and you graciously asked me to possibly be part of that. That sounds like a lot of fun. We're going to yeah. be going back into some old organizations and defunct organizations and good talking about stories and what happened and how they got there and all of those. Yeah, that is going to be amazing. Uh, you can find me on steelflyers.com. Highly recommend you keep on looking out at that site. That site is going to be absolutely blow your mind amazing. I'm not kidding. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for coming, Deli. No Lots problem. of Thanks love to you.